my name is Jabi, and we're taking a look at the Toy World Freedom Leader, or VWF09 Tactics Waistcoat. Freedom Leader is a better name. And for the pleasure of receiving this work of art, I gotta give a big thank you to Shozy Store. Thank you very much for reaching out to me. I'm glad to have y'all on board the Jobby train. Link in the description if you want to get one of these for yourself. You have two options when it comes to this figure, the standard version or the deluxe version, which is what we have here today. As far as I can tell, the only difference between the two versions is that this guy comes with some blast effect parts and a talking bass. We'll get to that later. Peel the plastic off from his titties as you would any pair of titties. Don't ask me about my Friday nights. God damn it. We just drew our prezzo. <laughs> We actually nailed it, too. We I did. Know, I do say so myself. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. that looks good. The best example of painting and sculpting that I've seen in a long time. It's really hard to believe that this guy is actually mass produced. The weathering here, the dirt, the rust, it all looks custom made. As if I paid a ridiculous amount of money for a commission. Instead, I paid a ridiculous amount of money for a talking base. Huge points up in my book that this is my favorite live action Optimus Prime design. And I suppose a little background is in order. This guy is a third party version of Optimus Prime from the movie Bumblebee, which I did watch, as I've said, upwards to a hundred times. And this being a third party figure explains the lack of Autobot insignias on his shoulders. The design itself and most of the designs in the Bumblebee movie are perfect updates to the originals. This design respects the original while also adding something new instead of saying, I can do better and then proceeding to shit the bed. Did my Twitter post for the last review get a thousand retweets yet? Doesn't look like it, thank God. Link in the description if you want to torture me further. Toy World has done an impressive job at replicating his look from the film, especially considering that these guys don't have access to 3D models like 3A does, which is incredible because I actually like how this guy looks a little bit better than that 3A figure. And no, I don't plan on reviewing those guys anytime soon. They don't transform. I'm a sucker when it comes to masochistically complex transformation. We'll get to that, trust me. Freedom Leader here is not 100% accurate to the film, there are some proportional differences. Very subtle, though. At least 99.9% .9 nailed it. On the topic of movie accuracy, the head sculpt here also nails it. And this is actually Toy World's second attempt at a head sculpt here. They actually did include the original head sculpt that they had in mind, and yes, this box is included with the figure. Isn't that lovely? You can put all sorts of stuff in here. The accessories that come with the figure, your weed. There you go. Definitely doesn't look bad, but I do prefer the head sculpt they eventually went with. There's also no way to switch the head, so whatever. But both of them look really good thanks to a certain feature. Woo, baby! This guy lights up as well, but you gotta push in his mouth. Very nice looking, but it brings up a slight issue I have. Once the lights go off, he looks kind of dead. Should have been painted more like the Zero One Studio Cell's eyes. Can't complain too much, though, especially considering batteries are included and installed. Not only that, you even get extra batteries just in case. By the way, assembly required for these boxes and yeah, you do get two of them. No instructions on how to build these, but they're pretty simple to figure out. These guys even feature some beautiful dry brushing. Amazing. In this log box, I keep the figure's armaments, which we'll get to later. And in this box, I keep some parts that will allow the figure to convert into Earth mode, as opposed to the Cybertron mode that it came packaged in. These windshield wipers are ridiculously rubbery, making it a little bit of a bitch to get plugged in. Again, no instructions on how to go about it, but also, again, pretty easy to figure out. Except these godforsaken hubcaps. I might make it look easy, but god damn, they were super stuck. Incredibly stupid design. Literally had to get a screwdriver and ah, scoop them out. But I'd say it's worth it because the detail that's revealed is excellent. Looks a little yucky on camera, but trust me, in person, looks like actual rust. And the Earth mode, in my opinion, looks a lot better than the Cybertron mode. The details on the new parts are just as excellent. Let's move on to his armory. You get this big old Energon shield that looks amazing. You can plug that into any of his arms, which in my opinion looks really good, but he's sorely missing a handheld weapon to go along with it. But you can take the shield here and split that guy apart. That's gonna allow you to plug these guys into his hands. Got little tabs here. It's a little bit of a struggle to get that plugged in, but once you do, you wrap around the individually articulated fingers, and he's got a decent nope. Nope, his grip kinda sucks. And not only are the tabs not cooperative, the wrists 
are stupid. Why in God's green earth are the wrist ball joints smaller than the sit on my head? I even tried doing the super glue trick, you know, pump a little bit of an amount there and twist it occasionally, but then eventually it just goes back to being shit. I suppose that's why you get a pair of trigger finger hands, but these things are ultimately worthless. They don't even have a little hole to tap the weapons into, so... It is possible to balance it out in such a way that it's not complete bullshit. That's a little more of a challenge to do when it comes to his guns, which all have some sort of adjustable handle, and this gun in particular has this. These two smaller guns, the classic Ion Blaster, which is a great looking weapon here, and a big ass rifle that does not fit in any of the boxes. This thing is fantastic, and I'm a bit proud of myself for actually getting him to hold it. The Ion Blaster and the rifle actually features some electronics by pushing a very very well hidden button here. Push it twice and that light stays on. Or push and hold it for a charge shot. And it'll keep firing as long as you keep it pushed. Ion blaster, same amount of lights and sounds. Push it once. Push it twice. And this time, if you push and hold it, you get a rapid fire effect. The light-up feature becomes even more impressive once you bring in these deluxe exclusive blast effect parts. Pretty basic accessories, but the lights light them up really nicely. And a little side note here, I actually had to intentionally break a piece off of here just to get this to fit. Worth it! And in this case, you don't even gotta worry about batteries. Again, pre-installed. But no way that I can tell to actually access the batteries and replace them. But that's because you don't gotta replace them. Both the rifle and the ion blaster feature this cap at the end of it. Ah, there you go. Which reveals a USB port. Yes, you are not saying things. Not only that, let me reach into the little box again. You get a USB cable and a wall charger with the TW of Toy World printed on it. I assume it's unnecessary for me to walk you through on how to charge these guns, you vape huffing degenerates. And the cable is, of course, compatible with the also deluxe exclusive base. Some assembly is required. It's easy enough. And it's even got a degree of posability. It's ultimately useless, though, because the figure that it eventually cradles, it's too damn heavy. But he looks super impressive mounted on the base, and if you turn it on, you can pull out this Includer remote, and this is where the features get a bit excessive. <laughs> you can turn on the lights here, which are not as strong as I would like, and the aforementioned talking features. It's a really nice feature, always a treat to hear Peter Cullen's voice come out of an Optimus Prime toy, as long as it doesn't cost $200 extra. Shut up! Unfortunately, I had to bring up something. I can't hear this performance the same way again. After the stories that Peter Cullen himself has told at cons, they really screwed him over with the Bumblebee movie. Go check it out in the description if you're curious about why Peter Cullen's not Optimus Prime that often anymore. Really fucked up, man. I'm not sure what we can do, but just bringing it to your attention, you know? Now that we've covered the look of the figure and the accessories, let's get to the bread and butter of my criticism. My heart sank all the way down to my goddamn taint when I got this guy out of the box for the first time. My standard procedure for any new figure that I open is to grab them from center mass and give them a little shake and unfortunately I 
agonized. I screamed to the heavens. Why the hell did Toy World design their chest like this? Shattered my expectations. I was looking forward to this guy for a long time. And it made me think even lower of Toy World after the Beast General figure that, you know, David K. Huh? However, thanks to a single post on an overly long thread on TFW, I found the solution. Open up his matrix chamber that can't receive a matrix. And right here, you actually want to fold this out once. Close that all back up and push down. Make sure these white parts are hidden behind his truck tits. And for some insane engineering reason, that actually works. I assume it's due to that extra fold out filling out the hollow chest there. It saved my sanity. With the chest issue resolved, I could finally focus on the rest of the joints of the figure, which are nice and tight. But unexpectedly of a figure of this size, and believe me, this guy is huge, there isn't a single instance of a ratchet joint. All friction joints here and I don't know why Toy World decided to go down that route. If I had to guess, they were trying to make the range of possibility as organic as possible. I mean, ratchet joints being satisfyingly clicky does limit the range just a little bit, but I wouldn't mind that. I prefer a ratchet joint to hold all the weight of the die-cast metal here, and believe me, there's a ton of die-cast metal. A lot of instances, including the biceps and the thighs here that are nice and cold. I guess we'll just have to see how the joints here hold up over time. As long as the friction joints maintain their friction, we should be all good here. However, the front skirts pop off a little too easily and that ad crunch is uselessly loose. Say that five times. Uselessly loose. Uselessly loose. <laughs> of all the Bumblebee Optimus Prime figures that are on the market right now, I still say that this one is the best looking one. And he pairs really well with your other Optimus Prime figures, that's for sure. But of course, we just talked about the robot mode. Let's pull out these borderline useless instructions. I mean, seriously, there's a point that I just completely tossed this out. Enjoy yourselves, because I didn't. You don't have to remove the smokestacks, but it saves a lot of headache later. You don't want to force the truck scalp to come down or else you'll crack the hinge joint like I did. The materials on this figure are pretty strong, but I guess I was stronger. <laughs> Transformation here was undeniably impressive. The engineering is. Bleh. 
<laughs> not fun at all to do this transformation on camera, but not too bad off camera. And the truck itself is all right. The red cab part is unrecognizable as a robot. And the weathering from the robot mode carries over here, and it looks fantastic. But a part about the promotional pictures that is unfortunately a reality is that truck grill there. There's really no way to get it completely flat to my knowledge. And that little notch that you see here is necessary for it to fold in. The details on here are really nice, but once you get to the back of the truck, the legs on the figure barely transform. Missed opportunity to come up with a more cohesive truck mode overall. Which makes me look forward to the potential toy lab figure there. It's only a 3D render now, but if they actually produce a prototype, that thing is shaping up to be the best Bumblebee Optimus Prime. At least you got headlights and a pathetic attempt to make it look like a real truck. Maybe if he had some kind of trailer to cover it up, it might look a little better, but a trailer and anti-aircraft gun, two minifigures are the last thing this guy needs for the price. But no matter, you could always place one of the included boxes on there, and that actually doesn't look that bad. It doesn't tab in, though, so be careful when rolling this guy. What does tab in, however, is the truck mode itself. Everything holds together pretty solidly. It's not gonna come undone. And if you're really curious, you can transform this guy using the Cybertron mode parts, and that doesn't look too great. <laughs> Despite a fairly weak truck mode, the robot mode is too damn good for me to dock off any significant points. Now, I'm not gonna go and judge the figure based on my experiences transforming it on camera, because not everyone has a six-year-old toy review channel that feels like a failing marriage. I'm not gonna dock points off of it for that.